I feel like an NPC, like that's stuck <laughs> in a corner. Five, six, seven, eight. Who do we appreciate? Dobbins. Dobbins. And Cashin. And Cashin. Icons. And Shimano. Let's do it. And maybe Cass King. Maybe. <laughs> Remains to be seen. It's a hard maybe. What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the channel. We're talking all things BFS. What does BFS stand for? Burley Fishing State. Burley Fishing's sweet. <laughs> do people even remember them? Burley Fishing's deceased. <laughs> It stands for bait finesse system. Yes. Like he was probably going to try to I was about say. to say that, but that's fine. <laughs> so what is bait finesse system? It is kind of a lame term, like lame term. It's kind of lame. It's BFS. a horrible term. It works, but basically it's bait casting gear for light slash ultra light. So yep. getting way down there, that means smaller compact reels with big spools that are super light, meant to cast, we'll say just in general terms, one eighth ounce or less. There's some crazy light and tiny stuff that you're gonna see yeah. in this video today. So we're gonna start with the setups. Now here's the thing, we did a whole podcast on this, so if you want the real nerdy, uh, you know, deep diving stuff, yeah. then you should go check out that podcast. It's already recorded in our podcast archives. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna learn about what these things actually look like and our first impressions, then that's what this video is for. So we're gonna start out with the reels. We've got a new rod, a new reel each for BFS. We went the premium route. Yes. I mean, pretty much the only option you have if you go like US based versus buying off of AliExpress, mm -hmm. uh, buying from overseas, JDM market. Uh, there's some pretty cool websites like Bait Finesse Empire that you guys should check out if you're mm -hmm. considering getting into BFS. And there's a ton of really good videos out there by awesome creators on YouTube. So you can always check those out. What we ended up with is really the only other two models other than the Cast King Zephyr, which is a I decent budget option. We both have yeah. used that for a little while. It's not my favorite. No, it's not my favorite know. by a long shot. No. So it is one that I would consider that I would consider messing around with an upgrading. So like putting a sure. custom spool on it. Sure. Um, just maybe putting some new bearings in it. But yeah, it's plasticky. It's a little shaky. It does okay with the lightweights, but it's not phenomenal. You can certainly get away yeah. with get away with it though for the price. We're not gonna mess with these. So what we ended up going with was the Shimano Curado BFS, which I feel like is the hometown favorite. Like when yeah. people talk about like, oh, it's I'm gonna get go -to. a good, I'm gonna get a good BFS setup. Like that's the one. It's two hundred dollars, readily available, mm -hmm. and it's not like, like there's the Scorpion BFS which mm -hmm. Shimano has, and then there's the Alder Baron which they also have, which is way up in price. Two eighty. This is right. This is right yeah. in the middle of everything. It's super nice. It's by a very reputable brand that yeah. does a lot. Has been doing this for a while. So this is the hometown favorite, I think. And that's the thing too, is because they're an overseas company, like there is a, an SLX, oh, yeah, Shimano yeah, SLX yeah. BFS, there's the Aldebaran and then there's the Scorpion, Scorpion yeah. right? DC. So there's some pretty cool stuff that you can get if you get it shipped from overseas. You're just gonna pay a little bit more depending on the exchange rate at the time, shipping costs, all that. Sometimes you can get a deal like- We're ADD and impatient. Yeah. So we went with what we could get We're next with, day. <laughs> we got this in two days. So this is the Curado BFS, notice that it's it's, you know, maybe the very similar looking to the Curado oh, because it is. It's like exactly the same except for the spool. Uh, a lot of these, they feel at first glance like a little downsized because you're just thinking bait finesse, mm -hmm. but it's like the same size as the Pretty Curado. Much. The only major difference is that spool and that's like the staple of any BFS reel. You're gonna get this oversized spool. So if I open this up, so you get this big old spool there, obviously much larger in diameter than you're used Couple to. Couple of things to notice though. See all the yep. holes in there? Those are not for like rigging, turn it sideways. Cause there's even in the center of the spool, turn it so they can see it right here. There's holes in the center of the Ooh. spool as well. The Why? reason is the lighter the spool, the less um, amount of weight you need to actually, on the end of your line to actually move that spool. The whole idea be behind the larger spool, holes inside of it is, the, and then some of the metals that it's made out of, like duralum, duraluminum, is because you're trying to get the absolute lightest spool possible. Yep. And then from like a bearings, you're trying to get the highest quality bearing because like, you, again, you're trying to minimize the amount of uh, force or weight at the end of the line needed to move that spool because you're trying to throw mm -hmm. a 1 16th or a 3 16th or something like that. Some crazy small weight. Exactly. Uh, you still got those like upgraded knobs as well as you're always familiar with if you guys have fished Shimano reels or the Curato before, like these are really nice feeling knobs. Uh, I mean, it feels well built. So compared to the well, Zephyr, right. which we I just mentioned, is that this is like that more metal frame. So it feels durable. It doesn't feel super flexy like the Zephyr always has. It's pretty smooth right out of the box as you can expect from the Shimano. And yeah, I'm pretty excited to use it. Out of the box, no mods. 
Not bad. Yay. All right. So the other one that we took a total risk on and Dude, yet this is this goes against my whole being. This it goes really against does. all you my DNA time. was like sucking like don't do it. Stop yourself. Uh, this was actually for you guys. That was actually me. It wasn't his being. I was saying stop. <laughs> Don't get this one. Just get the Curado. You'll be happy. However, we have seen other creators use this no, one. I've seen people happy use it. With it yeah, so. and the, the price point, I mean, you certainly hope that you're getting like a nice reel, right? Mm -hmm. But this is going to be the Cast King Kestrel, which I believe is the smallest hawk of the yes, hawk family. It's a type of bird. It came up on our podcast yeah. serendipitously. So <laughs> we were talking about who's your favorite bird and somebody was like, Kestrel. Kestrel. And we were like, we just got that reel. Yeah. <laughs> so not a huge Cast King fan. I'm just going to be honest with you. I like the fact yeah. that they make relatively inexpensive stuff makes fishing accessible to people mm -hmm. still not my favorite brand for me to fish personally however however you get your hands <clears> on this and thing. so i was nervous but i was like dude people are gonna be like yeah. would i pay 200 some dollars for this because these are 220 dollars us i would have never put 200 dollars <laughs> in casking in the same sentence in my life unless it was like nine reels that you yep. were buying and so i'm just kind of like okay like what are we doing here like does this make sense i'm like well there's only one way to find out and that's make a purchase so we yeah. have it right here so this is the casking Kestrel, um, it does look good. It's got a very small profile. This is unbelievably light. This, Holy this crap. This is a small, lightweight reel. So when I was like, this Curado seems downsized, but it's just my brain tricking yeah. me. No, this, this actually is microscopic. Well, let's look at the handle so, difference. So look at the difference in handles. There's the handles, the knobs. The knobs are dinky. Look at that. Tiny little knobs. Uh, the handle length is shorter on the Kestrel by about 10 millimeters, I would that's, say. I'd say 10. It's like a 90 versus 100 almost. 100 probably. You got that like carbon handle design to it, which I think casking does with like a lot of them. But this is the first casking I've held where I'm like, oh, it doesn't feel like a paperweight. It's not going to fall apart. There's not like that yeah. shaky feel to it. Like very little. I think the same amount as the, yeah, yeah they're, they're right in the same. It's a bit one of my, like, lighter. One of my this. tests is one of these where you just take it and you shake yeah. it. Like where are you feeling the shakiness? There's should be a little bit right here at the knob yeah. that's about it that's what i'm getting which is nice um the zephyr the entire thing flexes when you do that it's really really it's real frustrating it, it feels like a 200 dollars reel it does no it sure does so this one's 219 we picked it up on amazon the curato is 209 pretty nice yeah. um it's got the external adjustment right there i'm gonna try and zoom in there which right? is neat I like that. That whole dial turns versus that's pretty cool. The Curado, which is nice because it's concealed on the Curado, so you're never gonna bump this. It's it's got a little it's a little tough to turn. <laughs> that's like the Akuma. Yeah. A lot of the higher end. Um, so I like it though because then you're never gonna never gonna bump it. But I did like the setup on that one. Spool. Yeah, I'm gonna pull the spool out for you guys. Right. So again, going as light as possible. Up, and then look you at the center. Kind of see that. And then there's all your holes in the center. It's going to give you super lightweight. This thing super is so small. Yeah. Holy small side plate. Yeah. You can see that instead of having those discs exposed that you'll see on like cheaper reels, they're right there. There's your mag break. So there it goes inside arms. the spool itself, which is awesome. You get more surface contact, I believe, with that. And because it's lightweight, you really can't have them on the side because there's nothing to contact on the spool. <laughs> that said, these are also high speed gear ratios. I mean, it's a bait caster, both eight, like an eight, two to one. Eight, four for eight, the Kestrel, eight, two for the Curado. The Curado is slower. But there's nothing you can, that's not a bad thing or a good yeah. thing, right? Like typically I would want something that's a little bit on the slower end because I'm trying to control a really tiny bait. Yep. Here's the deal. The reason that is, is because of the size of the spool. So every yep. time you turn with a larger spool, you're gobbling up more line. Right? Gobbling. All right, what are we gonna put that thingy on? Uh, all right, so what we ended up going with for the pairings here, if you will, kind of yeah. like a wine pairing, we're connoisseurs now. <laughs> BFS is such a pinky out type of as fishing. We, as we drink monsters, what a joke. Cheers, cheers. What I ended up doing was going with a completely safe route while Paul, our risk taker of the group, uh, decided to go ahead and try new things. Uh, I'm proud of you, by the way, for doing that. <laughs> so I basically copied our buddy Ethan Duvetter, which if you want some BFS information, he's done tons of videos on him. He's the man. He's the man. So uh, I took his advice. I said, hey, like, what should I get for this stuff? And he recommended the Shimano Corrado as well as the Dobbins Sierra. This is the ultra finesse option. So it's an ultra light casting setup, six foot nine. Mm -hmm. And we went fast action. They do have an extra fast as well. This is like a true fast. Right, like, like it breaks on the rod where it should break. Whereas you'll see on his in a second, it's more of a moderate fast. So 
Well, it depends on what you're wanting to cast. The way we see it, like the lighter stuff, Paul's rod might have an easier time on than mine. We'll have to see once we actually get out in the water. This thing has an insane amount of guides. There are 15 guides. It was on this. the I think it was really the only difference other than action between yeah. your rod and my rod. Well, yeah, and then the main other difference you'll see is a cork split handle versus this woven handle. Yeah. So that's the Dobbin Sierra. This is the one you got. His is 190. So Jeff's whole setup was uh, 399. Not free $400. So I went with the Cashin Icon BFS. So as you can see, Jeff was talking about that real seat. The grip on this is that woven plastic, which I think is really cool. Um, I've got it on another rod that I've actually really liked, got no problems with it. Yep. I thought it was gonna get grimy, never did. The grip stays true the whole time. Um, it's got a really cool looking blank, uh, I think through and through. Come on, focus, there you go. The le it's just like really well textured, it looks really cool. Um, it has maybe, I think, five less guides, four less guides than Jeff does. Uh, they also start smaller and stay smaller. Jeff's start a little bigger, and yep. then they get really small at the tip. At first, I was a little nervous about mine being like super micro. I still and then am. I saw yours. My, my His are smaller than mine are. Yeah, look at that micro guide. Tiny. I have to tie a real nice tiny. knot. <laughs> so I think the biggest difference between Jeff's and mine, we, we had them outside and we were messing with them, is mine is a little bit more of a moderate. Yep. Um, which, which I, so there's a couple of things. Being a little bit more moderate, mine's going to handle treble hook baits a little bit better than Jeff's is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to throw a little bit lighter baits a little bit easier than Jeff's. Jeff's going to have a little bit better hook setting power. And as far as yep. jigs go, single hook baits are going to work a little better on his setup. Yeah. So your my, my weight range was two to eight. Mine's a light fast. They do make an extra fast. I kind yeah. of almost a little bit wish I got the extra fast. We have but the I'm, same <coughs> settings. I'm two to eight pound test line as well. Yeah. And I think both of ours start at the 116. 116 so 516. So I think we're, we're, we're right where we want to be. I'm really excited to try them out. I'm going to put this together in a little bit and I cannot wait yep. to uh, to give it a test. So that's the, those are the setups. Oh, and my setup comes in at 420 <laughs> on the dot. <laughs> so don't don't mind me holding this mic uh, too close to my face and Jeff's face because so our other somebody, Jeffrey, didn't charge your mic, but mine is. So hi. This is where you say you're sorry. I'm not sorry. You're fired. So we wanted to show you guys. I don't know. Pat Sajak. I hate you. <laughs> so you saw the setups. Uh, yes, they were expensive. But this also requires a pretty hefty investment in tiny weights mm -hmm. that are very difficult to find. So without searching very hard, you're not going to find these things. They're basically buried in the likes of Tackle Warehouse, Omnia Fishing, whatever. I don't even, a lot of sites don't even go below one eighth of an ounce or that, under a, a, like a number one or a one aught hook. So we uh, cut through that line difficult. and we found the stuff. So I just want to show you guys how we store this stuff real quick and then we'll come back to it at the end yeah. once we get this stuff unboxed. So number one, we're using the Busby Quick Cubes. Uh, you can use the, the D Deep version as well is a better option. I'm gonna be switching mine up. So you store all your plastics in here. We're also gonna store the BFS weights and hooks rather than creating a whole nother terminal box that we don't necessarily need. So one of the things I posted on Amazon a while ago is I bought these Mylar bags. They're very reflective on this video, but they're basically a zip top bag. Um, that's the same type of bag that you actually get your original stuff in, um, but they make separating out small hooks and weights like very simple. These are really ineffective. Do not leave these outside. Do not leave them in the water. These are bad for the environment. If they make a recyclable version of these, I will buy them tomorrow. So if you know of one, tell me so I can buy them. But this is the best I got for now. So enough of that space aluminum. Next up, what we got is the Busby 8 Thin. So this is about as small as you can get from Busby, right? This is the smallest tackle box that you can get from them. What we like about this is that you can still do those customizable compartments on the inside. And they're also very thin plastic in this version, in the thin version versus the regular. So it's lighter weight, it's less bulky, and you get the full use of the interior uh, space, right? So that's really nice to have that option. And what we're gonna be storing in there is gonna be like the little tiny stuff. So we got <laughs> chatter baits. We got show them the snap bean. Little little crank baits. Show them the snap bean. Where are you, little the buddy? The cutest little guy that you ever saw. And then we got the snap beans. Look at that. So this is the type of crank that we want to be throwing. And this is where we got to put it to the test. But I feel like your setup is gonna cast yeah. this yeah. better than mine. And this is basically impossible to cast on the sense light. 
oh. Cast King Zephyr oh. combo. The other thing I want to call out too with that setup, um, with this smaller Busby Quick Cube and that eight thin, um, that is a wonderful river setup. So if you're walking the river and you just got like a little fanny pack, you can fit those in there and just have everything that you want or could ever want for a day. If you're a kayak angler and you just got a little pouchy pouch, you stick it right behind your seat, like you're ready to go. That is the ultralight dream. I got everything I need and I don't have to a lot of space and I don't need a lot of stuff. It's pretty rad. So we talked about hooks, right? You're gonna need some, no, ah, not the floor. in the ground. Not on the carpet. <laughs> So here's the deal. We'll go from largest to smallest. So we're going to show you the hooks that we got. We're going to hold them up to the screen so you can see the brands because yep. um, it's really important to know like where you can get a lot of the stuff. Uh, disclaimer, all of this came from Tackle Warehouse. Mm -hmm. I think all of these hooks came from Tackle Warehouse. Some may have come from Amazon, but yep. again, you can watch the other video and you can see exactly what we bought and where we bought it. But if you're watching this video, you just want to know, we'll hold them up for the, to the screen for you so you can see it. So here is a size two. You get a quantity of six. These are gamakatsu, which are fantastic hooks. I mean, yeah. these are hooks we fish with all the time and our standard stuff, even versus BFS. But yeah, little, little tiny EWG guy, which is nice. Couple reasons. Obviously, we're gonna plan on BFS Texas rigging, Carolina yeah. rigging. You could also just make that a drop shot. So if you wanna have like a weedless drop shot, having a small size EWG is really helpful. But a tiny hot. child rig, yeah, which is the, uh, uh, Ned rig that can go anywhere and but do these, anything. But these are big. It's funny how big this looks. Like this looks tiny on on the on the screen for so you. So just because it's like, called a size two or size four or size six doesn't mean that it's going to be small, right? Yeah. So you have to choose your hooks based on that. Gamma, like they just this is how they do it. Just you're going to see in a second a microscopic EWG. Just wait. So again, we're just talking the wire here. So it's a number four right there. A little bit shorter on this one just because it's that lighter wire setup. So. I mean, again, gamma, going to be great. Those others are going to be really good for craws and worms. So when we're talking about smaller craws and worms, like mm -hmm. that's going to be perfect for those. The next the next thing that I you're going to see here, this is for the, the mule plastic. So just let me yeah. grab one for you. So this is what we're talking about uh, actually fishing. So this mm -hmm. is a 1.8 inch craw. I mean, so you, Micro you need to find a really small hook if you're going to fit it in that like yeah. one inch section. So this is where it got tricky and this is where we won and we're doing it for you. So show them what do we got coming up next. So I'm jumping to these, but this is for the ultralight drop shot. And when we say ultralight, we don't mean like, you know, using just smaller plastics. We're talking the ultralight setup, ultralight line, ultralight weights, ultralight hooks the gamut right? right so normally we'll throw light drop shot on like our light or a medium light setups you're going to go with you know anywhere between an eighth and a quarter ounce weight for that you've got maybe a one knot maybe a size one size one maybe a size two still on the too hook. big though still too big so yeah. we had to downsize that these are the owner mosquito hooks it's dope I mean, Owner is, first of all, great. If you guys haven't heard us say that I'm before, we'll say it favorite hook company. Love Owner hooks. So these are great. They're actually really affordable. I got these on Amazon. Uh, so very affordable. Quantity of 10, size 6. And this is for the purpose of drop shotting those craws, mm -hmm. as well as like the downsized mule minnows, maybe some small paddle tails, all sorts of different stuff that Paul's going to show you right now. So that hook is going to accommodate a 1.2 inch mule minnow, which is really tiny. These things were actually meant to fit onto an an 80th ounce hook one slash eight zero so <laughs> yes i mean it seems insane until yeah. you realize this is your bait there it is and if you thought those were small you're wrong these are <laughs> so these are called the hobbit and i remember it's in the video this moment like, you can see the moment where paul recognizes that this is the ultralight ewg that we have been looking and for and my light the light bulb goes off and i read He's the description like, and i'm like hobbit. that one says hobbit <laughs> hobbits are small <laughs> so size six look at those so this is like a true ultralight ewg before you get the lighter wire but you still have the the normal size yeah. to your ewg these are microscopic, as you can see. Now, what this is good for would be obviously we can take those really downsized plastics, then we can rig this up. You could either you could drop shot this on those ultralight plastics, yeah. of course, which is gonna be nicer on an ultralight little setup. Pair shot, <laughs> a little, little power shot. Power shot up to one eighth. <laughs> ultralight power shot. Uh, <laughs> it's an ultra power shot. <laughs> but then obviously you can just rig things up for Texas rigging. We're gonna show you some weights that we're using. We got the 132s and the 116s that we're gonna get to. Yeah in just a second and uh these are gonna be rad for that it's got carolina rig written all over it and they get smaller oh my god look at this size eight are you kidding me look i can't even ah it's so tiny yeah. the ryugi yep. infini hobbits i found them cool <laughs> uh we're so happy to have awesome friends like you guys yeah. and one of our bestest friends who's also on 
I think both of our teams oh, for yeah. the, uh, by the way, if you haven't registered, you should be registered for the Knucklehead Bass Series. We've got prizes coming in from Busby, Akuma, Monster Bass, Waterland. That means sunglasses, tackle boxes, fishing reels, uh, stuff that we're giving away to our top performers each and every single month for the next four months. So it's May, June, July, August. Starts now, 55 bucks to do all four months. And the winner, the top fisher from each month is yes. going to come fish with us in Alabama. Bama. It's going to be awesome. It's an absolute blast. Rock is on our teams. And you know, regardless of how well you think you fish, it doesn't matter. I, Just join up, have fun. All the proceeds are going to a great cause. You know, and we're not good anglers. We're not good tournament anglers. We Please come be very average with us and just have a good time. That's all I care about. If you're going to learn aggressive. and you're going to have fun, that's all I care about. All right. So our buddy Raka sent us some weights. Check these out. And uh, quite a hefty bag full. Yeah. Uh, so we got the 132s and the 116s. So 116s are in black, 132s in lead. Uh, I'm pretty pumped about this. So really appreciate my dude sending this out. 100. There's a hundred in here. There's almost says. enough. Ah, I'll lose them. And then 20 of the 116s. Yeah, I mean, we're going to lose some for sure. That's the point. You're supposed to try, you know. But uh, thanks to my guy. So those, will be, so those will be used for Texas rigging, those uh, tiny cross. Those will be used for Carolina rigging, some other stuff. Um, and it's, yeah, it's going to be wonderful. All right. And then Paul found this brand. Then they reached out to us. I think they're sending us some stuff to try. I don't know. We, we bought this. We bought it all anyway. We bought this with our money. So this is, this will be just like our opinions, man. Yeah. <laughs> we picked these up. These are tungsten weights that are actually really affordable on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, we haven't fished with them yet, but they look good it's and fun. it's a tungsten weight. So I'm assuming it's going to be just fine like any other yeah. tungsten weight. We'll see. We're going to test them out. So but the reason we're calling this brand yeah. out is that it's very hard to find tungsten or really anything in these in lighter weights. Weight. And you can find all the way down to 132, which is maybe even too yeah. light. So the 116 is readily available. And again, if it's on Amazon, all of these had like the next day shipping, which is pretty freaking rad. And they had a lot of different kinds. They had the, they had the open... Oh, yeah. They had the open hooks, they had the pinched uh, hook types, they have, or not hook, but the connection points. So if you want to do a mm -hmm. free rig, they had those. If you want to do a drop shot, they had those. Yep. They had it all, which is pretty sick. So we got these micro Texas weights as well, which, you know, compared to the amount Raka sent us is like hilarious. You know, hilarious. However, cool. We're going to test them out. Mm -hmm. We'll compare them to uh, Raka's, which have the power of friendship. <laughs> Much more powerful. <laughs> and then we're going to try something super fun. This is a free rig weight. Oh, yeah. Ooh, these are gonna be super neat. So this is in one eighth. So this would be like the power setup. Mm -hmm. But rigging this up on a bait casting setup. It's gonna make for fun casting for oh, one. This is okay. gonna be fun to fish it, but also like a really unique way to fish these baits. Yep. So putting that craw on the ultralight EWG so sick. On, a, on a free rig. So sick. Right? And it, and, it, and it doesn't end there. Yeah. And, it, and it doesn't end there. Hang on. And, and it doesn't yeah. stop there. And it doesn't there. stop there. And then and it doesn't, the party don't stop. And it doesn't stop. All right, so another thing that you saw that, again, was kind of hard to find and we wanted to show you is jigs that match this setup. So we're talking 1 16th um, or 132 ounce jigs, like skirted jigs. All right, so let's start with this first one. It's from Ike. Bam! The Ike's micro jig. That's pretty rad. It has a Gonkatsu number one out hook. It's got a custom fine cut skirt. I'm just reading the back of the package. <laughs> uh, optional weed guard. And it was made in USA. Warning, this product can expose Stop. you to chemicals including lead, which is Go no away. Too. So these are really dope. <laughs> and uh, check out that chartreuse. Shut these off on this live that we just did recently. Uh, yeah, super cool. You actually have to glue the weed guard in if you want to use it. So you can go open hook or you can add the weed guard. A um, little extra step, but kind of unique customization. Cool. Yeah. I'm on board. So these actually came up when we were on with Ethan on our live. He was like, hey, I heard about these Kitech jigs that are ultra light. And he showed them to us. And I just put them on the list and we bought them like the next day. Instantly. So very light brush guard. I think it's one wire. Uh, these are obviously very lightweight. One sixteenth of an ounce. And then we also got some 332s. So we got a little variation there. I think 332s. Uh, Probably my favorite yeah, ultralight so, weight. It's so perfect. It's heavier than 116. It is. Barely. <laughs> but it's also, I mean, when you get the 332 with a plastic on it, right. I feel like it's a perfect uh, ultralight bass fishing weight. So there's the, the two different weights right there. A couple different colors that we picked up. Obviously, we went green pumpkin. We got the PB&J. I don't know yeah. why. So this is something I want to call out. So this PB&J, this PB&J color, zoom, you dork. This PB&J <laughs> color, every single 
finesse or ultra light jig comes in that color yeah. why like what is it about that like it's it's green pumpkin black white and mm. this color like yeah. every single time and then we got this bluegill color dope this is my favorite i think it's I called think. bluegill fire it's so cool it's not even written on it's here. very crappie-esque <laughs> so uh people talk about the difference between tungsten and lead like why would i ever do that tungsten's way more expensive and it's just like tungsten not lead or whatever totally understand it you guys are right most of the time but one thing i was noticing tungsten being 33 percent smaller on average than lead um means that typically you'd get a smaller profile usually you can't see the difference i'll be honest at like normal weights like even at a 1.8 i don't notice the difference there's a huge difference with these really small weights between the lead uh size and the tungsten one check these out that 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 is a very noticeable profile right? difference to me look at that that's insane. And so both one sixteenth of an ounce, by the way. Both of these it's are a huge difference. Yeah. And I think when you're dealing with like That's ultra what looking at. And when you're looking at ultralight profiles, like those baits are so small, that means that whether it's matching the plastic or maybe not matching the plastic. So total I mean honestly, that kind of makes up my mind as far as if I have an option, I might be going tungsten with the ultra light stuff. All right, so now we're gonna talk line just very briefly. I know everyone's already snoozing, so sorry <clears throat> about that. Uh, so we are gonna go, I'm gonna be testing out the suffix 832's classic fluoro, but as you can see, it's going down to six pound, and this one is white. Very uncommon. I've been testing out white this year. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad about it. I'm not sure that I like it more or less than yellow. the yellow slash chartreuse, which is my favorite. Like this. I don't like the Power Pro. I find the Power Pro to be a little stiff, but it does work. It works just fine. And yep. it's a lot easier to find than everything else. It is. It is. And it's pretty affordable. I mean, for no, great. it's super cheap. I love it. So. There's, I'm, I'm, we're, we're griping over here. All right, next, let's talk leader. So those are both six pound. That's what I'm planning on running. Is that what you're running? I might trade you up for this. Yeah, you could fight me. I'm keeping that one. All right. This is my favorite line for my ultralight rig is yep. the eight strand uh, Daiwa J braid. Yep. That's freaking good Solid stuff, option. man. Uh, so this is going to be a fluoro that I'm going to test out. I'm going to compare this to the six pound, which is the soft steel. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm going to be carrying all of my leader lines is on these little cards. These are for Tenkara fishing. So I've got them wrapped around there. I've got at least, there's probably at least eight um leaders on each yeah. side so i have four pound mono on one side and i have six pound fluoro on the other pre-cut ready to go Freaking dope there's that soft steel right there this is what we've been rocking for a while now so i'm i'm yeah. a big i like that so much yeah, it's nice it's, it's super nice. nice so that's the tatakai that's the upgraded version they have a downgraded version we call it the working man's fluoro yeah um it's still really good. It is. I have no problem yeah. with it. I still use it all the time. But the, if you can afford the Japanese fancy fluoro, it's that's pretty worth dope. it. It's pretty dope. Thanks for watching this video. If there's time today, there won't be. We will go and test these today. So next week. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for a BFS on the water review. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Consider subscribing if you like videos like this. And we'll catch you on the next one. Later, nerds.